Ranch Simulator? <laughs> I cut out the first part because I accidentally said Planet Crafter. <laughs> Obviously not Planet Crafter. Um, let's see, we got some gas in those tanks. I forgot I went and got that. So we gotta get some more planks going. Um, let's go take a look at her. Do I do have the dump? The it's on there. Okay, let's uh, see. Are those empty? Yeah, they are. I guess we could leave them in here. We're gonna, we'll bring one of these with just in case if I need it for, if I don't know if I've got enough gas in my truck, let's try it. Oh, didn't need too much. We're gonna put one of these in here. And we're gonna take the truck and go over to the oil rigs and see what we have. Because I need to get oil, because I need to get the metal. Oh, I hate that thing. I always hit the E when I'm trying to get start the engine for some reason. I do have honey I can harvest too. Why? <laughs> it's so hard to drive with the keyboard. You get whipping back and forth like that. exactly how much oil I'm going to have in there because I haven't been over to it for a while. At least I think. kind of lose track of time on the game when I'm jumping back and forth from a lot of different games. Yike! It doesn't even seem like I was going that fast. Is there an update to the game or something? Because it's really weird. It started different than it normally does. For one, when I started, usually it starts as just a small screen up in the corner of my monitor. And I always have to readjust the resolutions to get it to actually go to full screen. But this morning it actually went right to full screen. Plus, when I logged in, it was... I was standing on top of my bed instead of standing next to it like always. Let's see, what do we got? 83, so I don't quite have two barrels yet. I do have one though. So I can fill one. We'll stick the other one just on the ground here. I guess I could just take all of the oil, even though it's only one and a, like one and a half barrels. But it'll get me something because I need to get a lot of metal. equipment in the truck. I've got it all in my beer. Oh, my UTV. Man. I dislike the driving in this game. <laughs> I really do.
get that oil sold. And we need metal. Lots and lots of metal. But we can only buy two of them for right now. But two is better than none. Because I want to get these both, you know, I want to get everything set up before I start getting animals. So I need to have that windmill and I need to have the granary. And once I get that, I'll have the ball be, ball be rolling and I can just get fence built and get, get the animals and then I can start producing cheese and all that fun stuff. Okay, I am back to the ranch. It is middle of the night now. <laughs> I had to step away from the computer for a little bit, so that's why the time has changed so much since uh, kind of jumped <laughs> from one time to the next. Which works out okay. Now we're back to the ranch. We got our got our metal and all that we need. Yeah, we're going to see if we can't get this well up and running right now nice okay well now we have water for irrigation so we can actually start thinking about putting in uh, some plants so what we gotta do is we don't have much money uh, but I still need 75 more metal for that which we used all of our uh, um, oil money so but we do need to get seeds because I do let's let's cut upstairs take a look at the planters real quick I've got three of them done I do have some boards still let's uh let's go grab those start getting some plants going then it'll uh, have a little bit more income we can grab the, the honey too let's go do that let's grab the let's see I don't need anything from there we're gonna go grab do the honey and honey money we'll go towards seeds and I still need to get more um, Oh, yeah, let's uh, grab our smoker first. We don't want to get all stung up. <laughs> how much? How many jars do I have in here with that need more honey in them? Just one. I think these are all full. Yeah, they are. Oh, I do have some metal in there. Not much, but some. Okay, let's grab this honey. jars because now I'm going to put this honey in this will go in here and it's going to I don't know maybe I should just do try one at a time here and see how much honey it puts in there because there's not much space left in there One frame does have pretty much on it. Should be able to do two frames. <laughs> Maybe get up as much as I need. Do one frame at a time because then I, you know, I'm not going to be able to put any more than that in there anyways because it only can go up to 7.5.
Oh, well, maybe you'll take three. Yep. Just. take me up to the 7.5 that I need. And these wood shells are pretty much pointless right now because I'm not going to be using them. I'm going to be using the boards that I, I produce. Yeah, it still has 30%, but now by the time I get get back with, more, with the jars again, it should be back to 100%. takes me back. <laughs> I remember like my best years for beekeeping were 98. 97, 98 I think it was. I had 60 hives. Oh, holy crap. Oh, and I need my smoker. Um, I had 60 hives and I was producing thousands of pounds of honey. Yeah, that was fun. I would some of it I would sell in bulk, so I would sell it by the pail. And I, I, had, I had some customers that literally bought a pail for themselves, which I liked it that way better because they were buying the whole pail. I put it into, because they had a big family, and they would uh, give their whole family honey. So she was just like, oh, I'm just going to buy a pail. So I bought her a pail with the honey gate at the bottom. And that way I was able to get the per pound more than what I would have if I would have sold it to another, you know, a facility that sells, you know, they buy ball honey and then they bottle it and sell it. I did sell quite a few thousands of pounds that way too because I just had so much honey I couldn't, you know, I was selling at seven different stores and stuff and I was, you know, doing farmer's markets, flea markets things like that and I was selling a lot of bottled honey but you know that <laughs> that's a lot of work bottling that much honey and trying to sell it but it was always fun you know I, I was selling it at a video store and a, a, a nail salon which really you know you don't think okay why is there honey at a, <laughs> at a video store a nail salon and uh but I was I was working at the video store at the time. Oh, is he gonna try to attack me? Come on, reload before it comes around the corner. Come on. Oh, come on. Jeez. <laughs> Wow, what a waste of bullets. I thought it took more than two to kill one of them. Oh well. Um, but yeah, that kind of got sidetracked there. Um, it, uh... <coughs> Yep, sidetrack. Now I lost my train of thought. Getting attacked by a wolf will do that sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was nice. I would come in and, because um, I was friends with the owner of the video store, and when I started working there, then I was selling it there before I was working there. And that's kind of where I got, you know, I got the job was because he knew me, the owner knew me then from, from selling the honey and I'd run errands for him and stuff before I worked there. And then I'd, I'd start working, um, became a supervisor, and that was fun. You know, I'd come in and, you know, beside my paycheck, I would have money sitting in an envelope <laughs> for um, the honey that sold overnight or the, the, that day and stuff. Uh, it was always kind of nice to come into. And then you get, you know, I'd go to a, do a farmer's market and stuff. And, 
you know, you go for a few hours and come home with a couple hundred bucks. You know, three, 300 bucks back then was huge because, you know, this was their late 90s. Honey was very, very undervalued because we hadn't hit the, um, the colony collapse yet. Bees were surviving a lot better than they do now. Uh, so honey prices and package prices and stuff was a lot, a lot less. Cause you, I could buy, I was buying three pound packages. Um, if you watch some of the videos, there's one where I've got bees in the back of my station wagon. Um, and I had 10 packages, and for the 10 packages, I paid, what was it, uh, oh, wait a minute, was I going to go buy seeds, wasn't I, yeah, um, they were 20 bucks, 25 bucks a package, with shipping, now you can't even get a queen for $25, and that's doesn't count shipping, and then I had some, if you watch the videos, there's one yard where I've got a long line of bees along one of the fences, and that, um, those hives, I bought 20 of them for 100 bucks a piece, two, two story, top, bottom, inner cover, two deep, um, beehives with bees in them for 100 bucks a piece. You can't, I, it's, I look at the prices now, and it's like, holy cow, there's, you could never, could never do that. It, it's probably 300 bucks per hive with bees in them, possibly. So, it, it, it's something the way the prices have really, really gone up. Uh, let's see, what do we want here? We, we want to get something, we can't really get any fertilizer yet, because I don't have any animals yet. I could just buy a goat, 500 bucks. Should I just buy a goat and keep it in the, but then I have to get food for it. Yeah, we're not gonna do that yet. I don't wanna get ahead of myself. Let's get a couple more honey containers. So I have them there, I can always store them. Uh, it's fertilizer. Okay, we want, Watermelons always seem to do pretty good, but pineapples are good. Let's get a, some pineapple seeds. Let's get some watermelon seeds. And grapes are good. So we'll get three of those for right now. Let's see, what else do we need? We, we're going to need sprinklers. Let's just get two sprinklers for right now. Yeah, it's like I do want to get a goat, but it's not quite yet. Okay, we're just going to go with that. Two sprinklers, two honey, and okay, cool. Now, let's make sure we pick this stuff up. Too many times that I've, like, drove all the way home and didn't have any of the stuff I need <laughs> actually in the cart with me. Now I think we can put the stuff in here maybe. Nope. The seeds can, yes, we can put the seeds into the cooler. Okay, and now we got our sprinklers. Okay, cool. Oh, we were almost out of gas. Let's uh, top that off before we get rolling. <coughs> there could be bees up in the woods over here. Oh, I was hearing sound. Oh, 
I was hearing this humming noise and there's an airplane going over. I was like, what is that? <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was in game or if it was outside. Yeah, so we don't get much noise outside this time of year where I live, which is so awesome. <laughs> But then when you do get some kind of noise, it's like, okay, what in the world is that? Yeah, I could not imagine living anywhere else in the world over where I live. got the best of all worlds. It's like um, where I can be, where it's peaceful at night. If you want to go to a town, you can go to go to Hayward, which is 45 minutes away. Go to Cable if you're not, you know, if you just for like the store and stuff like that. But if you want to go to like a mall or something, it's like an hour and a half, two hours to get to to a mall, like in Duluth or Superior. It's an hour and a half. Or you go two hours to go to Wright's Lake and there's malls and, you know, all your big box stores and stuff like that. We do have Walmart in Hayward, which is 45 minutes away. Which is close enough. Sometimes it would be nice to have a little bit closer, but not too often. I prefer distance. Okay, let's go drop all this honey stuff off. You know what? I'm just gonna do this. I do have more honey I can harvest. truck bed 
try to get them down. I know I got them. I, I've got a lot of this stuff on video on my channel here. So if, if you go over to the Marks B Viz, um, go to my playlist and go to the Marks B Viz playlist, you'll see a lot of my old beekeeping videos and stuff. I'll try to remember to tag the the playlist in the in the in the um, video in this video, so you can get get over there easily and find it. Go check out all those old videos. Okay, let's go plant some stuff. Eh, well that works. Like didn't even really think about. It. I could just actually just go drive right up in there. Okay, let's go put a sprinkler down. See if I put the sprinkler then right in the middle. It should water all of them. And I don't really need two yet, but. Yeah, let's just set it on the ground here for right now. I think I'm just going to plant one of each. Whoops, let's uh, plant watermelons there. Oh, wait a minute, I can do two. Two per. Good. Let's do grapes. And we will do whoops, watermelon on that side, or pineapple. I mean, you got watermelon there, pineapple. And now is it going to automatically start watering? Sweet. Okay, we need some more planks. Now that we get that started. Let's uh, go make some more planks before the end of this episode. I'm really running out of trees. It's something I think about, I think back on when I was young, the amount of stuff I used to do, like places I managed and you know how hard I worked and stuff for to get goals <laughs> met and I did pretty good on most of them I put my mind to something like I, I always wanted to be a commercial beekeeper but it just wasn't feasible it was like the price of going commercial just not like financially sound way to do it because it was uh, 500 it's going to be like 500,000 to go commercial and I'm like okay well I really don't if I had $500,000 500, I wouldn't be I wouldn't need to start a company <laughs> Back then, five hundred thousand dollars would be like a million now, and that's you know you put five hundred thousand dollars into a bee business, and you're you never you know, you, you might buy the equipment you need for being commercial, and you might you know, get all the bees that you need, and that winter it could be a bad winter, and you all of them before you even get the first like honey it's just it's a, the, the risk reward was just way too risk <laughs> than the reward side of it people do make a go of it but it just uh, yeah it was not I enjoyed it but it wasn't 
worth that risk. of it. The people that I worked with were selling honey and stuff. I had sold honey to a, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of the year when I was running. It was around the time I was running almost 60 hives. And I was selling to the seven different stores. <laughs> and I was, one of them was a health food store. And so I was working at the health food store. I was supervising the video rental store. And then as I was um, working at the health food store, there was another video store that was kind of struggling next door to the health food store. So I would work there a couple days a week to help get them squared away. You know, to try to streamline their processes and stuff like that to try to help get them maximize their profitability and stuff like that so I was running doing that at the same time so I was doing four different jobs at the same time I think it was I just, and it seemed like I had more time when I was doing that doing four different jobs you know the bees selling honey was you know, that was another side job, you know, it's like, that was flea markets, farmer markets, and things like that, that I would do on top of managing these other stores and stuff. And, um, it seemed like I had more time doing all those jobs than I did when I became a uh, general manager. When I stopped doing the bees and went into retail, I was working like 70, 80 hours a week, getting paid for 40 as a store manager, because we just didn't have the budget for employees, so I was the one taking up the slack, always with the hours, so I was, I was making less than my lowest part-time employee, hourly, when we figured it out, so that's when I decided to leave. I'm getting ripped off here. <laughs> I'm a zombie. <laughs> Never seeing daylight because I was in the store all the time. good to get away from retail. I went to Best Buy for three years after that, but that was a little bit better. Well, at the very beginning, we had an amazing GM when I first started. But then Best Buy as an organization started coming up with some really dumb policies and sales tactics that none of them worked, and it just got to where I was more stressed out all the time because of it, and and then I was I had gotten a raise for like a year and a half, and I was doing I was oh shoot, so I just got fed up with that, so I started looking for another job, and I I made the mistake of thinking Target was going to be a decent place to work, because one of my uh, the old GM. A new GM, but an old. New. The GMs changed when I was there, and uh, to the one he went from. Or no, actually, I don't know, think about this for a second, because this was a long time ago. So I'm trying to remember the whole way this whole thing went. The my target general manager. When I started at Target, I started just before Christmas, they gave me more money. 
they gave me a su I was a supervisor. They, I got quite a bit of a raise over what Best Buy was. The general manager that hired me, a couple weeks after I started, he left and went to work for Best Buy. So it was like I went from Best Buy to Target, and he went from Target to Best Buy. And shortly after he left, Christmas hours left, and I got pulled into the office, and they said, oh, well, yeah, you're not Target material. I'm like, well, let's see. I've been here, I was here for two weeks before Christmas, before Black Friday. I was the only supervisor you guys scheduled, the sales manager scheduled, for the whole store at open on on Thanksgiving morning or the Black Friday so I'm like okay I really don't know what I'm doing yet but yet I'm running the whole store <laughs> so but I'm not I'm not target material um, and then right after like a week after they let me go I found my job for a supervisor in the paper for four bucks an hour less than what I was being paid so talk about feeling used. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, I was told this was a full-time permanent job. And that's why I left a three-year, you know, job that I had for three years with Best Buy. Oh, did I leave my saws? I did. Oh, my goodness. I left Best Buy to go work for Target because I thought, you know, start me more money maybe I'll get more a little more appreciation and yeah that didn't happen target ended up being a horrible place to work it was it, not a good experience you know wrongfully fired I, I called corporate I called I, I tried to find a way to get you know um you know, find out what's going on. You know, it's like you can't bring somebody in on the pretense of permanent job and then let them go right after Thanksgiving hours disappeared for no reason other than, oh, you're not target material. And I'm thinking in my head, I was like, oh, what? Target material, what does that mean? What does target material mean? Be a jackass. <laughs> Head. I don't know. I, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. <laughs> Talking about Target makes me angry. <laughs> not a fan of the play. I, I have not stepped foot in Target since that day. And this was 2000, 2004, 2005. I think it was. Or no, wait a minute. I left Best Buy 2003, December, November, November. Um, two weeks before Thanksgiving in November of 2000, um, 2003. 20 years, going on 24 years since I left Best Buy and went to Target. And then I was in Target for a couple months. Okay, let's get these back in so I don't accidentally forget them again. It's like all these boards, I have a feeling it's not going to build hardly any of those net, um, <laughs> those growing boxes. It's 12 per. That's just ridiculous. Uh, if the Debs are watching this, why 12? 9, maybe? If you look at the, the way the box is built, you know, you got 4 for the sides, maybe 4 or 5 for the floor. So maybe, the, the, you know, 9 or 10 at the most. Maybe, well, not 10. 
9 would probably be the best. Not 12. That's just too much. Okay, let's go take these boards over and get that get those boxes done. With horrible brakes on this thing. <laughs> Let's get that cart out of the way because it's just. Oh, it's not gonna do good there. Let's just pull it over to the side here. There we go. I think back to my old beekeeping days, and that was. That was some fun times. I, had, you know, I, I hardly ever got stung because I always wore my bee suit. You know, I see these beekeepers that don't wear bee suits. I'm like, more power to you, but boy, I work around too many bees to get stung that much. You know, so you're taking the chance of getting, you know, allergic. Plus after doing bee and wasp removal that I've done now for 30 years it uh it's just that it, you know you're dealing with wasps on top of bees and stuff and it got to the point where honeybees I was I started getting like more of a reaction to the bees than I did to the um to the wasps which is good because I deal more with wa with wasps than I do with the bees but still, you know, you know, you don't want to get a bad reaction to any of them. But uh, let's see, let's uh, I, yeah, let's do the front ones first and work our way back. But yeah, last time I got stung by a honeybee, I was managing a lady's uh, hives for her. That was one of the services I've I offered with my bee business, but I don't I'm not down there enough to do that service anymore because I was only going down there for for a while. There was a, a month or two, and now it's more a week or two, and then next year I don't think I'm going down there at all. Whoops. Which is fine by me. I will miss the biz, you know, the people, a lot of really cool customers and stuff that have been real loyal, have, you know, done removals for a lot of people quite a few times over the years. They get, you know, multiple nests over the years. But it's not an easy job. It's hard on the body. I thought I planted. Oh no, that's one I just finished. Okay. Yes. Okay. Let's. Uh. We'll start back there now. Okay. Let's see. What do we want to grow here? Let the. These grow pretty quick. So we'll do watermelons there and there. And we'll do pineapples. And we'll do some grapes in the back. Grapes seem to be growing pretty slow. And let's grab our sprinkler. Could get fertilizer too, but nice. I do love that we can get. I wonder what the range. If the range is gonna reach all the way over here once we get boxes all the way over. And we'll just set all of the watermelons here, and we'll gradually move them out then. Yeah. 
Okay, well, we are on our way to growing our crops. If you can see through the window, we got our windmill going there for pulling water for sm sprinklers. Okay, well, I think that's where we're going to leave off for this episode. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out and listening to me ramble. If you have any, um, if you have ever kept bees or anything, share your story down in the comments. Be sure to go check out the my uh, Mark's Bee Biz playlist. I've got a lot of cool videos on there from back in the day, early, mid-90s, late 90s. Uh, probably the best beekeeping times if you were going to be a beekeeper. That's the that would have been the best time to be it. <laughs> Prices were good. Bees were stronger and healthier than they are now. Um, glad I did it when I did it. But Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have an amazing day, and I will talk to you in the comments. Remember, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, I do have memberships now. So smash that join button and check that out also. Have a great rest of your day.